Hello friends! I am um, going to show you today how to make a journal or a diary out of a children's book or a teenage book. So I was at a fair, going to a fair, just quickly where I saw this, and the only booth that really excited me at the fair was a booth with all the children's books. I saw The Stinky Cheese Man, which is a book my oldest daughter liked, and I thought, oh, this would be a great Christmas gift for him, but the book was like $35, and limited income going on here, um, I thought, well, maybe I can make my own for cheaper. So... The bindings on those books were really kind of cute, and I called around to every place in town that I could, <laughs> and I live in a small town, and then I called around to like the larger cities, Staples, Office Max, and none of them do pretty bindings. So what I'm thinking is the company orders them and does them themselves. So I, after calling around, I found that they all did similar bindings, and the bindings that they do are these types, sorry, I broke that, this type, um, or the plastic ones that kind of fold over and pull off, but those ones break over time, and these ones that are wire. So I decided to go with this type of binding. I learned a lot of things, so that's why I'm making a video. I wanted to share with anybody who is interested in making one of these or doing these for gifts or whatever. So I think you're okay on the copyright because you actually purchase the book and you own the book and you're not changing the writing or the story and you're not reselling it. You're just doing it for your own use because you bought the book and you own the book and you're keeping the book and you're not photocopying it or anything like that. So don't photocopy it and make seven of the same thing. Just buy, buy the book and then you Bought, you bought it and you're not changing it or altering it or anything and I think you're okay but I'm not a copyright law lawyer so don't go by me but I'm not selling them I'm just making them to use for personal use so for my kids I contacted each of them and I said what was your favorite child book book as a child what give me your top three and then your top teenage books so I tried to find those books um, living in a small town and t limited time, I was a little bit um, tight on being able to find exactly <laughs> the books that they said, but they gave me a range of like, one of my daughter's favorites is Dr. Seuss, and so I was able to use Green Eggs and Ham, which is one of the books they all learned to read on. Um, and it was funny because the book I used was given to them by their uncle, and it was written to my oldest two daughters, but I actually gave it to the third, and they thought that was hilarious because she was always getting hand-me-downs. So, um, but she was the one that, when we did divided up the books, she was the one that ended up with the Seuss books. So I figured it was hers anyway. So I, I used that because I had a second copy. So um, you can use books that people have given you that have sentimental meaning. Um, so I tried to find things that for my grandkids, they don't necessarily have favorite books yet, but um, I try to find books that fit their personality, so or things that they might like. So my youngest, I got um, The Strong Man, it's about uh, Alice, and then I got Flat Stanley, which is a classic for my other grandson, and then my granddaughter, I found one that's it's called Grandma's Promises. And it is the sweetest book about what I promised to do as a grandma for her. It's written by a grandma to the granddaughter. And so she loved that. Um, at first, I was going to give her the Diary of a Wimpy Kid because I thought it was titled Diary in it. But um, her mom talked to me about it and explained that <laughs> there's some negative things. My youngest daughter loved it, but she was a little older than my granddaughter. So she said it might be good if I gave it to an older grandchild at some point, but not... The youngest younger ones because it's kind of a negative <laughs> I don't know I haven't read it but my youngest daughter read it and thought it was great and we've seen the movies so um so I tried to find things that they might like um so at, when I found that grandma book promise book I knew she would love it and so I, I got that one for her but if you're just doing it in general I mean like this golden fairy tale book is great um and so what you do is, um, I'll talk about the binding and stuff later, but what you're going to do is you're going to put a couple of pages blank. So you put the first few pages and then you, um, every, I tried to put, like this one has lots of different stories. So I tried to put the stories in clusters. So this was Little Red Riding Hood. 
and then uh, then pages for a journal, and then the next one is Billy Goat Scruff, and then a few pages, and then and this one also is Golden Books, so you would recognize some of those as Golden Books. So, um, so that's how um, you would do it: is you put blank pages. But how you have to do it is if you're going to bind it, you have to have them cut the binding off. So I'll share how I did it. So you cut the binding off and then um, you take blank pages and you put them in between the pages. Uh, well, I didn't do that at first. So I just took blank paper, stuck it at the back of the book um, with the paper when they're cutting the pages and had them cut the paper to size so that I could take them home and then insert them where I wanted in the book so that when I cut the hole for the binding that it would uh, line up. Now when I went first and talked to the place about cutting the bindings off, he went ahead, when I came back the next day, he had already cut the binding off the Trixie Belden and had punched the holes in it. However, he hadn't cut the other paper with it. And I'm like, wait a minute, you can't do that because when you punch the holes and then you punch paper, I would have to line up every single hole and the lines may not line up because you already punched the holes. But then when I started looking at the pages, he had already cut, he had punched it upside down. So I don't want to show you print because that's copyrighted, but it's kind of bright so you can't see it. So anyway, he put the punches over here and punched the holes in the wrong side and so thank heavens I had enough space to cut the bind the, the punches that he had done on the wrong side and then cut blank pages and then put the binding holes and the binding on. So it was helpful for me to be able to go down and just stand there with him and then I would have him kind of the binding, he would hand me the book, he would start working on the next book that I had already put together and I would put the top and the bottom um, aside once he cut the binding off and then I would put um, the blank pages and then he would cut the blank pages at the same time as he cut the you know to fit the pages of the book the size of the book so when I first went in <laughs> he was struggling with the concept he cut um, a ream of big paper in eight and a half by 11. I said, don't cut it in eight and a half 11 because none of these books are eight and a half by 11. And so you're wasting paper. So what you do is you take the biggest paper first and have them cut the biggest pa paper first um, on, for the biggest book. And then you take the next biggest book and have them cut that paper. And then, so only the amount you want cut to that size. So you don't take a whole ream. You just take how many pages you want to add into the book. Um, storyline and so to how thick you want it to be so this one has a, a smaller ring binder on it and this one has a larger so this is a 30 millimeter I think and then this is like a 22 and then there was 25 and 28 I think I in the sizes books now obviously this the Trixie Bell done and the one is going to be a huge line much bigger um, th these are the only two kids books, the teenage books kind of size that I did. We used to read these as a teenager, so I did this one for my sister. So, um, but then when I, um, so then you take them and you take some time and you decide how you want to split them up chapter by chapter or every few pages. Um, these ones are really thick because I actually left the whole book in it. But I have seen some where they take some of the pages out and just leave like pretty pictures or chapter headings in it. So it's more of a diary versus the book. But I left the whole book um, complete because I felt like it was that's how the author wanted it. And so I just left the whole book in there complete. But um, I have seen that they did not do that in some other ones I have seen for sale. So um, then um, when I went back the next day... <laughs> um, I was going to get them all punched and uh, there was a problem. His whole staff went to a major league basketball game and came down with COVID. So he said I could come in and use the binding machine at my own risk. And so I went in and I started punching the these in. Now the newer books have cheaper bindings. They're kind of a, not as sturdy and they were really thin. It was just the paper there. The cardboard wasn't deep enough. So he didn't know how to make it deeper. So I think if you went to a place 
that was a little bit more printy. <laughs> they may know how to make, see how close they are to the edges. Um, and so I had to, on the inside of some of the pages, in order to make them stay, I had to actually add cardboard and then use tape to tape them in and then punch them because they weren't, the holes were not deep enough. The, the machine wasn't making the holes deep enough. So I would suggest if you're going to do this yourself that you go to a place that can make these a little bit deeper in so they're they're really sturdy in the cardboard versus um, on the edge because I, I did and on some of them I actually had to put cardboard on the outside the flat Stanley the binding was just so thin that I had to put cardboard on the outside and then punch the holes. Um, and then both places that I went, one place didn't have the smaller rings, so I had to go to a second office supply store and get the smaller rings. And both of them warned me they're buggers to get in. Um, and I thought, oh, how hard can it be? Well, let me just tell you, it was hard. And I messed up several of the books um, trying to get them in and twist them. And it wasn't until like the third or fourth book that I realized if you lift the covers, the thicker pieces, that they go through really much easier. So I was able to just twist them right in. I mean, it just twisted in and twisted out very easily for the most part once I had them through um, into the cardboard. But when you have the cardboard front and back down, it the angle of them just makes it super hard. So I would twist it and then it would get stuck right coming up. And then I would have to kind of lift it and wiggle it in. But when I realized that if I lifted them up, they would be a lot easier. So just be aware if you're ever gonna do this with this type of um, binding, um, that it's a lot easier if you don't have it flat like this when you're trying to, cause I was lining them up and trying to get it in and it, it didn't work well. Also, when you're using the punch machine, you have to set it so that the punches are equally distant um, and they're not like half on or half off. So you test it on paper and make sure that the holes are set equidistance. And I didn't do as well on the front. You can see the front is cut off on that one. So, um, and it's a little bit lopsided because I had to once again go back, put cardboard and then punch it again. And you can't do the front and the back thickness wise in the machine. So it takes a little bit of practice. So what I would suggest is if you're going to do this and your printer will let you go in and um, use the machine yourself, that, or you can buy your own machine and do this yourself, but um, it, you need to kind of practice on a book you don't care about. I didn't do extras and um, except this, I wasn't sure about this one, so I bought a couple of smaller ones. So this is an extra one that I did. Um, and it's really the only extra one I did because um, I wasn't sure she'd want this one. So I bought the grandma one instead. And my granddaughter, I gave her the option of this one, the diary or that one. And she picked that one and it's adorable. It's just fits perfectly for us. So that was good. So when I gave it to him, I mean, if you have any questions on how I did it, go ahead and ask and, and the, um, and I'll try and explain it, but you can go to my blog. I have a picture of all of the kids holding it um, Christmas Eve. I gave it to them Christmas Eve with the pajamas and um, that we do. And uh, I was explaining to each child or in-law or grandchild why I picked the book I did for them. Some of them I couldn't find their favorites or any of their favorites being in a small town. I mean, I did visit um, other cities and went to five or six um, other thrift shops in the cities that other than where I live there was two here but and I kept checking regularly but I did try to find like one of my son-in-laws loves Goofy that's his favorite character and I was able to find a vintage um, Goofy book that's like a comic book and they laughed because it had bite prints <laughs> in the cover <laughs> so <laughs> it was funny that it was but um, and then one of the books I thought it was hilarious it had to so-and-so from grandma and uh, from mom and I said I was going to put a sticker over it but then it was so funny that 
because I do a lot of thrift shopping and most of the stuff that I get is thrift shopping, being a single mom and raising five kids on my own limited income. A lot of the stuff we have is thrift state things that I redo or remodel or spruce up. And so I decided I would just leave it. And so uh, my kids were just laughing. They thought it was hilarious. And um, so they said, well, you need to sign it above and then below where they did it. And then we we kind of, at the, while we were discussing that, it came up that we do a um, picture with me and them. Well, I give it to them in our matching jammies or whatever. But I didn't have makeup on. I've been bawling, telling each one of them why I love them and why I picked the book that I did. And so I was like, my eyes were red and swollen and I, I look like crap trying to get the house and ready and it's Christmas Eve and you know how busy it is getting food and taking care of everybody's needs and it was the first Christmas we'd been together in six years so it was really kind of a emotional time anyway to have them all there for Christmas for the first time in five or six years so um it was all it was awesome but they did want me to take a book a picture of them with the book that they got and um so I did did take an individual picture with them in front of the tree of giving them the books and um and it was and so then I was going to stick them in the book um but I the problem with sticking them in the book was that they all left early because there were storm warnings and they all live in different states <laughs> different cities two in different states opposite ends and uh we have one here and one here and one here one in the state. So um, they were all needing to leave early. So, and, and even days early, some of them left earlier. So it was kind of crazy. So I didn't have time. I did stay up late um, the night before they all left and wrote, they said they wanted me to write in their book. So, um, and then the morning I got up early, hoping I would have time to get them printed at Walmart before they left, but they ended up all deciding to leave early because of the storms. So I wrote in the beginning of the books for them. And, um, then I printed up a picture of me looking like that the night before, <laughs> like, no makeup, swollen eyes, red eyes. And then we took one after church. So there's a before and after. <laughs> in front of the tree the night before and then the morning after we went to church um and I told them they could choose which picture they wanted to put in or they could put both of them in like you know they could easily cut down that one and they could put them in either the front page you know or in the back or whatever they wanted to do but I'm going to let them decide what they want to do with that but um but it was just kind of a fun gift. And when I asked my new son-in-law, they've been married since July. Um, when I asked my other son-in-law who'd been married 10 years, what his favorite gift was, he said, um, the Legos, I got him a couple different sets of large amounts of Legos. And then, um, my new son-in-law, he said his favorite book was the, the, I gave him, um, the King's Highway, which he is always serving others. When they came at Thanksgiving, he cut down a couple of trees in the backyard for me and it was really sweet. And so I gave him the King's Highway and he, um, I told him why I gave him the King's Highway and, um, because he's always serving others and he's just a really sweetheart. So of course I'm bawling as I tell each kid why I gave him the book that I did. But so it was a really, um, a fun kind of thing. I, it was stressful. <laughs> So, um, I, and I worry that the bindings are not going to hold because they're so thin in the book. So I wonder if like the, um, there are the kinds you can buy that just, you fit through two holes and you clamp it and then you fit two through holes and they clamp like that. But I just don't know which is, which would be better because I have no experience with that. So, um, but my kids all said, but mom, this will probably hold up better as a journal and a diary as you're opening it because you can open it and lay it flat, you know, it's, um, and then they could write on it more easily. So they said they were happy with the way that it was. And so, and then I did one for, like I said, my sister. Um, but so I just want to share that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, but it, they, they all really loved it. And my grandkids especially. And so I challenged them. Um, like I've been a journaler since I was, um, 11 maybe. And, um, I really believe that there's a, 
it's good to have your history written down. I mean, you don't have to write every daily what you do, but in general. And so I used to write down in my kids, I would write in their diary every fast Sunday, um, which is for us, it's the first Sunday of every month is the day that we have designated for fasting and donating that money to charity, basically our church or, and, um, and then they use it to feed the poor. So um, I challenge them the first Sunday of every month to take a few minutes and write um, in their journal for the month and just a general what's going on in their life. And because it's been such a blessing for me to go back and look. And then um, I challenged my daughter that has kids to let them write in it that they're starting to write or draw a picture, just, you know, like make a little space and say, draw Because when my kids looked back through theirs, because I would say, okay, you older ones write in your journal. I'm going to type up what's going on with the younger ones. And um, I've been able to share with them the journals that I did write. I wasn't very great just going through a divorce and being single. I, I, it wasn't something I did on a every month basis, but I did at times was really good at it. So um, I sent them all what I had written about them in my journal. Um, I made journals for them on the computer and then typed that them up, uh, sent them to them digitally. So, but I did think it would be really fun to print those up and put them in the books. I just didn't have the time to get that accomplished with everything that was going on. Having to had to go to this place myself and do all the work myself. <laughs> so the guy gave me a pretty good deal because I did a lot of the work myself. But, um, and then one last thing, I, when I was there and the machines weren't working, I had to redo it. They do have a machine that punches individual holes and it's a power operated. So you turn on the power and then you pull it down. So when I had to put the new cardboard in, I couldn't put it back in the same machine because the holes aren't in the same spot. So I put the cardboard in and then I literally by hand punched every hole. And some of them I had to do twice just to get through it because the tape made it sticky. So be aware that if you do have some problems like that, um, that you, they do have that machine. Most printing places would have that machine and that's an option. And, um, so there's that. And then maybe, you know, take a fun day and take a picture of them with you that you can put in the book before you give it to them and then write, you know, a little blurb about them in the book so that when you give it to them, it's already done. Or you could do like I did and you know, take a picture of them with the book, <laughs> but make sure you look pretty when you do it because <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Check out my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com. I have a part A and a part B on this, what I did at the beginning and how I got it. And then the part B, I'm going to add this video to that, but there will be pictures of um, all of the kids with their books and um, I'll throw a couple of the other ones in I took. So. Um, of all of the books that I did, I have one of just all of the books done. And then a couple of me putting, took pictures of me showing how to put in the spiral binding and stuff. So anyway, I hope you have a blessed day and I appreciate you watching.